The United States have tried at least four times to purchase the island of Greenland, but what if one of them succeeded? How would that change world history? Watch the video up until the end and I bet you won't expect the outcome. Their first attempt was in 1867, right after the Alaska Purchase. William Seward negotiated the purchase of Alaska from the Russians. Right after that, he submitted a report on how beneficial it would be for the United States to also purchase Greenland and Iceland. Unfortunately for the Americans, these ideas didn't come to light. The reason for this is that the American public didn't even approve the buying of Alaska. The Americans made another attempt at buying Greenland right after the Second World War, in the year of 1946. The USA had occupied Greenland during the war because they didn't want the Germans to get it after the fall of Denmark. After the war, the Americans offered the Danes $100 million or $1.3 billion in today's money, but the Danes didn't even consider the offer and wanted their island back. This didn't stop the Americans of building a massive air base on the island, the Thule Air Base. This air base grew to include 10,000 service members because the island was very important during the Cold War. The Americans also tried again very recently in 2019, but again, they would be denied. The Danish foreign minister said that Greenland is not for sale. Now, let me answer the question you're having right now. Why bother spend money on such a useless piece of ice that pretty much nobody lives on? There are a couple of very important reasons as to why. Let me start off with the first one, which would be defense. The USA wanted to buy Greenland right after the Second World War because the Cold War had just started. Greenland is fairly close to the USSR, across the Arctic Circle which means an American bomber can easily reach some Soviet cities, for example the city of Murmansk. One of the most important defense characteristics that Greenland presents is that it can defend the mainland USA. A missile early warning system will detect the missile sent by the Soviets a couple of minutes before it impacts in the USA, meaning that the Americans can detonate it before it causes chaos. Another important reason for Greenland is the abundant resources that are hidden underneath the 2 kilometers or 1.25 miles of ice. It is rumored that Greenland has two or three times the amount of oil that Saudi Arabia has, but right now, with all the ice blocking the way, it's too expensive to dig it up. If the planet continues to warm up, this will cause world chaos in countries affected by global warming, but also, the ice on Greenland would melt, exposing the abundant resources there. Finally, the third reason as to why Greenland is so important is trade routes. The Arctic Circle has been historically impossible for ships to go through. With the warming of the planet, however, it is becoming increasingly easier to navigate the Arctic Ocean. This is important because let's say a ship with goods will travel from China to Europe. Traditionally, it would need to pass through a couple of choke points, such as the Strait of Malacca, then the Suez Canal, after that either Gibraltar or the Bosphorus Strait. These choke points are controlled by several other countries and if they decide, they can stop the access of Chinese ships. In an alternative route using the Arctic Circle, China could sail north around the North Pole and would arrive in Europe a couple of times faster and cheaper. Now let me get to the point of diverge and how the USA would buy Greenland. In the year of 1910, right before the First World War, there was an interesting proposal for the USA to purchase Greenland. I will focus my scenario on the following idea, since to me this is the most probable way the USA could have bought Greenland. A couple of Danes approached the United States ambassador in Copenhagen with a pretty interesting idea. Since the USA would control the Philippines for the time being, the idea was to trade the southernmost island of Mindanao indirectly for Greenland. Mindanao would be the second largest island in the Philippines. The proposal was that the USA trades Mindanao for Greenland with Denmark. After that, the Danish would trade the island of Mindanao to Germany in return of control over northern Schleswig. The Germans were already well established in the region of the Pacific as they controlled a quarter of the New Guinea island as well as some Pacific islands. This idea didn't succeed, because just four years after that, the First World War started and after it ended, Germany gave back Northern Schleswig to Denmark for free, so there was no point in doing this trade anymore. Also, the Germans were stripped away from all of their colonies, it would be unlikely for the Allies to allow Germany to have a colonial power again. Now, let's say that idea comes to light and before the First World War, the USA gets Greenland, with Germany getting another colony and Denmark getting Northern Schleswig back. To be transparent with you, in my YouTube comment section I have been criticized that my scenarios are not realistic, and they really aren't. They are supposed to be interesting, so I will sacrifice some realism to make an interesting video out of it. If I was 100% realistic, then most likely nothing would happen in this scenario. 
with the USA retaking the island of Mindanao after the defeat of the Germans. The only difference with our timeline would be that the USA would just own Greenland, which by itself won't change the course of world history. So, let's sacrifice some realism and make an interesting video out of this scenario. In 1911, just one year after the idea was proposed, the plan would be completed. The Philippines would be very unhappy with the situation. Their second largest island was stripped away from them and given to the Germans. The Filipinos would rebel against both Germany and the USA. The Filipino independence movement had just started. In 1913, two years after the island of Mindanao was transferred indirectly to Germany, the Philippines would declare independence. They would achieve this with a very coordinated attack on the major city of Manila. The leaders of the resistance movement had organized this plan for two years, so it would be very well thought out to say the least. The rebels would focus on taking all the major port cities in the country, so the USA wouldn't be able to send any more troops. The American troops that remained in the Philippines would be either destroyed or would surrender. They would be mostly stationed in and around the city of Manila and after the city is taken by the Filipino Liberation Army, the American soldiers would lose coordination. The First World War would begin shortly after that, with the Americans still being busy with their rebelling colony. The USA wouldn't join the war or would join one year later. Regardless, the outcome would be the same. What ends up happening however is since the French and the British stole all the German colonies after the war, the same would happen in this timeline. Since the Philippines now managed to successfully secure their independence from the USA, they would now focus on the southern island of Mindanao. Unfortunately, the timing wouldn't be on their side, as the war would end and the British would end up taking the island for themselves, adding the territory to the British colony of Malaysia. The new Filipino government would try to negotiate a deal with the British, a purchase or return of the island, but to no success. This would greatly upset the Filipino public, splitting them on the matter if they should let the island go, or do they fight to regain it, even if it's the last thing they do. Back in the USA, they would effectively settle Greenland, with the population becoming 100,000, just 8 years after the purchase. This would be achieved by the Americans building and giving away free houses to citizens who request it and are willing to live in Greenland for up to 20 years. Going to the Philippines, the Filipino movement would be inspired by Mussolini in Italy, as he in 1922 would rise to power and promise the Italians revenge on the British for stealing their rightful land. This would greatly concern the British as they did not align with this ideology, so they would propose a very interesting deal to the Philippines, become a British dominion and regain the southern island. The Filipino public would be split on the matter as some wanted to take the deal and rebel later, just as how they got their independence from the Americans. The discussion would turn into riots and the riots would turn into a civil war. There would be two sides fighting for control over the Philippines. In the north would be located the pro-nationalist, whose goal would be to retake the island by force and stay independent from any other power. On the other side, in the south, would sit the pro-British faction, who would want to reunite the country and work with Britain. The British would send guns to the rebels in the south, but the equipment would just get lost or never see combat. The reason for that is that there was no single pro-British faction, there were many with the same goal, but they weren't united and communication between them was poor. Also, it was unknown in case of victory which faction of the many within the rebels would assume power. So, some faction leaders decided to steal British equipment and use them later against the new government, so they can become the rulers. The North, however, was way more unified than the South, having a single party with one idea to pursue. The Civil War would drag on for 5 years and would finish in 1928, with the Nationalists winning the war. They would push the rebels out, hoping from island to island. An idea was proposed that they continue with their momentum and take the British island of Mindanao. After that, they would just defend the port cities and prevent a British landing. The idea would be scrapped, however, and for now, the Philippines would be at peace. The United States would become a bit more involved in the European theater, as they would now control Greenland and would be close to the continent. Greenland is a perfect base to station American soldiers that can later be sent to Europe. This would cut in half the time and the cost required for the Americans to reach the continent. Something very important to note is what I just said, the Americans wouldn't be so isolationist and would watch what is happening in Europe closely. On the 7th of July, 1937, an incident on the Marco Polo Bridge would occur, and soon after that, Japan and China would be at war. The Philippines by now would be pretty much allied with the Japanese, since they had very similar ideologies and same goals for Asia. 
The Japanese wanted to liberate all the Asian colonies from foreign occupation, including the island of Mindanao, which was wrongfully taken by the British. The Philippines would join the war against China, supporting the ally of Japan. With their help, the Chinese would completely collapse in the next year. Just kidding. The Filipino army, despite performing decently well, would do little to change the outcome of the Sino-Japanese war. Maybe help Japan take a few cities, but other than that, nothing major worth to mention. Siam, now called Taiwan, would want to retake some land away from the European superpowers, who have colonized the Indo Chinese peninsula, even stripping some land away from Siam in the past. In 1941, while the Sino Japanese War is going on, the Japanese faction will decide to strike the resource rich area down south, going to war against the United Kingdom, France, and the USA. This would bring the USA into the Second World War. By this time, the island of Greenland would become a fortress, being impossible for the Germans to take. The USA would have on the island radio beacons, radio stations, weather stations, and ports. American bombers would start raiding Norway, not quite reaching mainland Germany yet. The American soldiers would also be sent to the United Kingdom, where they would prepare for an amphibious attack on the French beaches. But before that, let's check the Asian theater of the war. With Filipino help, the British would struggle in Malaysia and defending the Dutch colony of Indonesia. Malaysia would fall in just two weeks, even the stronghold of Singapore would be overwhelmed by the speed and success of the Japanese faction. In our timeline, the Japanese had connected Korea to Thailand for a couple of months, but they couldn't keep it up due to pressure they were applied from the Chinese and the Allies. In this timeline, with some help from the Philippines, they can secure the corridor I just mentioned. The difference between this and our timeline is that Japan in our timeline had to attack and occupy the Philippines, meanwhile in this timeline the Philippines are on their side. The Japanese would take most of the valuable islands in Indonesia, but would lose a key battle to the Americans. In Europe, Operation Overworld, also known as D-Day, would start and succeed one year earlier than in our timeline. This would happen due to the Americans controlling Greenland and being more committed to the European theater due to being close to the continent. Again, you might say that this is not realistic, and you will be right, but the direction I am steering the video would be way more interesting, so I will continue. The Germans would fall in 1944, one year earlier than in our timeline, with the Allies reaching Berlin first, as well as reaching some parts of Poland. Japan would put up a bit more of a fight, capitulating the next year, but still, the outcome would be the same. Since the Japanese would capitulate a couple of months before they did in our timeline, the United States would not be able to use their nuclear weapons on any hostile nation. The world is yet to see the destructive power of the nuclear bomb. I am very well aware that Japan surrendering before the bomb and the USSR joining is very unrealistic, but I wanted to explore a scenario where nukes are not used in the Second World War, because it would create a far more interesting scenario. So, let's say that the Americans make a landing in Tokyo, taking the city, and maybe capturing the Japanese Emperor, forcing him to sign a peace treaty, or force total annihilation by the United States and the USSR. It's peace treaty time. In Europe, the Soviets were too slow, the Allies had already reached Berlin and Poland, which would give them more favorable terms in the peace treaty. All of Germany would be liberated eventually, but first it would be occupied into zones, just like they were in our timeline. This would exclude a Soviet zone, since they didn't even reach Germany proper in this timeline. A German Socialist Republic would be established in Königsberg, the territory that is now known as Kaliningrad. Sadly, Poland would have to be split up between East and West Poland. Russia would gain control over Romania, Bulgaria and Hungary. Czechoslovakia would be split up between a democratic Czechia and a communist Slovakia. As a final note, the USA would occupy the island of Iceland and offer Denmark $100 million for control over the territory. Since the Danish have already sold two times to the United States, for the sake of this timeline, they will agree yet again. Going to Asia, the USA would retake the Philippines, pulling them towards their own sphere of influence. The Philippines would at least have the island of Mindanao back, which is a plus for them. Communist China would not receive Manchuria, as they did from the Soviets in our timeline, so it's possible that they lose their civil war to nationalist China, but this is outside the scope of this video. Japan's government would change, but the emperor would remain in power, similarly to what happened in our timeline. The Soviet Union would not be satisfied with the peace treaty, they would want a unified socialist Poland and Czechoslovakia, as well as taking some land away from Germany as payment for their war against the Soviets. 
Keeping that in mind, the Cold War could very well go hot in a couple of months after signing the peace treaty. Operation Unthinkable might actually happen. The Soviets had planned to attack very fast through Germany, who still were unorganized, and to reach the Rhine River in just two weeks, where after that they will hold and enforce their demands. But that's a topic for another video. The destructive power of the nuclear weapon is still yet to be seen in a real war. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned the Alaska Purchase. Watch this video about Liechtenstein buying Alaska instead of the USA. I promise that you will not regret it. For now, however, I'll end the video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.